Hello and welcome to Talking Football Monday edition and today with a special show covering the Champions League draw held earlier today in Switzerland. With me here to do it are Joao Borovic, football analyst for Globe's Business Daily and website and I24 News, Michael Friedman, who will follow the reaction from the world press. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. What are the hottest clashes in the round of 16 and who is standing in Real Madrid's way to the second successive title? All the answers coming right up. Let's get started. If you had a feeling of déjà vu while watching the second round draw, you're not wrong. The two hottest clashes in the next stage were also matches featured in the knockout stages last season. Paris Saint-Germain against Chelsea and Manchester City against Barcelona. Four giant teams, but only two of them will make it to the quarterfinals. Other matches feature Bayer Leverkusen against European runners-up Atletico Madrid. Juventus will tackle 2013 runners-up Borussia Dortmund in a rematch of the 1997 final. Champions Real Madrid should go past Schalke, as they easily did last season. So does Bayern Munich, who will face Shakhtar Donetsk. Arsenal's manager Arsene Wenger will meet his former team Monaco. And surprising Basel will try to surprise again when they face Porto. The second round will begin on February the 17th and will end four weeks later on March 17th. You have, I really had trouble deciding which match is bigger. I went with the Chelsea PSG ones, uh, one simply because of the dramatic ending last season with that Dembaba goal in the 87th minute. As it seems, Chelsea did get stronger now. Uh, um, Diego Costa came in, Fabregas came in, PSG, we're not sure. Am I right by putting Chelsea again as favorites? I think they are favorites, but slim favorites, because as you said, they did get stronger. They're having a very, very strong campaign, both in the Premier League and in the Champions League. But lately, in the last few weeks, Chelsea are not performing on the same level. On the other hand, PSG is really gaining force in, in France. They're a very strong team. They're just as rich as Chelsea. They don't have the star power. They don't have the same amount of great players, but they do have their fair share of very, very and good players. And this guy is Nassan Ibrahimovic. And if he goes through, it's not a surprise. If this guy will be the best guy on the pitch, PSG have at least 50% of winning. So they really need the great performance of the great Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And they also have Edinson Cavani. You know, they have two very strong central strikers against a very assortment of stars in Chelsea. As you said, it's a fascinating matchup. What a matchup. And, and Michael, the press loves this rematch. And they also love the fact that the most expensive defender in the world, who played in the winning side last year, Chelsea, will come back to Stamford Bridge, yep. but wearing a PSG uh, jersey this time. Exactly. The press are very excited about this matchup. Uh, David Luiz, the 50 million pounds that he, he brought from uh, from Chelsea to PSG, it's uh, it's a big storyline. What, what will we see? How will the reaction come from the Chelsea supporters? Obviously, he won trophies for, for Chelsea, so it will be interesting. But the other big name is, obviously, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. How will will he perform? Will he be injured? So it's going to be it's going to be an excellent matchup, and the press are very excited to see what will become. Yes, yeah, certainly one to watch for. Now to the next big match, Manchester City against Barcelona. It wasn't very close last season in the same stage. Barcelona won 4-1 in aggregate. And even if Sergio Aguero, Aguero returns by then, he surely will not be at his best. So, you have again, is it right to look at Barcelona as favorites? Because Manchester City, even without Aguero, they have the, their, their big stars. I think it's a very close match. I don't think we'll ex uh, accept a 4-1 mm -hmm. aggregate score la like last year. At Manchester City are a very strong team. They come as the English champions, the Premier League champions, the strongest league in the world. Manchester City really had a very convincing win at Roma last week without their four best players. And beating Bayern Munich come, before that. And beating Bayern Munich before. To come into the Olympico in Rome without your four, four best player, company, Silva, Aguero and Yaya Touré, and still beating Roma 2-0, this, this is very convincing. I really like the work of Manuel Pellegrini, but they're competing against Barcelona, and when we're talking Barcelona, we're talking three megastars. Messi, Neymar, Suarez, but, and it's a big but, Suarez doesn't play like a megastar since joining Barcelona. You know, he scored two goals in the Champions League, didn't score even one goal in the Spanish La Liga. You know, he gives assists, but he's not the same Suarez of Liverpool, of Liverpool. and Ajax and the Uruguay national team. Barcelona will need him in his top four because so far we see in Barcelona it's Leo Messi and all the rest. Neymar, when he's great, is brilliant. He's not always great. Messi has really been playing well this season, 
But is it enough? Last year was enough against, against Manchester City because Pellegrini did not play his usual attacking-minded football. He was afraid. He just came with one striker. I think this year Manchester, Manchester City should be more confident, more adventurous, more attacking-minded because they do have the talent. They do have more top players than Barcelona. Again, more than fascinating matchup. It's going to be very, very interesting. And you think you have it's going to be a close matchup? So does uh, Luis Enrique, the Barcelona manager. Here's what he had to say following the draw. It is going to be very balanced, I have no doubt. It was balanced last year, and this year will be no less. They are likely to win the title as well as we are. Now, Michael, there was no real fight last season. What is the, what is the press thinking? Is, is Manchester City better off this time, or is it bad luck to draw Barcelona again? The Irish Times are calling Manchester City's you know, tough luck uh, in the Champions League draw. Um, it's a successive year to, to, to get very unfortunate to have uh, Barcelona. Um, despite Barcelona not being on the top form right now, um, they're, they're saying that you know, City, it's going to be a real challenge for them, um, and they would have definitely have preferred an easier draw. Uh, but also, there's a, a big connection. The uh, city director, uh, Chiki Beggar Stein, one of the greatest of, of, of he was Barcelona a former Barcelona player. And he said, you know, I will take the time to visit my friends and family because a lot of them are out there. But he labeled this draw as, you know, unbelievable. But he knows that they came through a very difficult group, um, and and they 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 see themselves going on and taking this matchup real seriously. Absolutely. They always seem to draw the toughest competition. <laughs> they don't have luck with the draw. But let's not forget, last three years, they're champions two times in England. They have the money, they they're have the star team. power, they have the coaching, they have the management, the Barcelona management. So I think it's almost 50-50. Maybe Barcelona are tiny favorites. Could this be their year? What a, what a matchup to look for. On to our next match, Bayer Leverkusen against Atletico Madrid. The Colchoneros hope to repeat the success of last season in the Champions League. They're also doing relatively well on the home front. Leverkusen, you have, isn't an easy draw, but still, if, if you judge, Leverkusen is not, is not um, Bayern Munich, not Dortmund when it comes to European competition. One that Atletico Madrid should go by, even though it's not easy. Yes, you know, it's sometimes dangerous to say about a team should go by, but Leverkusen finished second in the preliminary, in the preliminary because Monaco finished first. So Leverkusen is not having a great season. They do have talent. They have young players. They play an attacking uh, game. They play nice. But Atletico is stronger, have better coaching. They have the longevity going for them as well. So Atletico are favorites, but I'd say 65-35, 60-40. You know, still Leverkusen wouldn't shock me if they will beat Atletico because they have talent. So uh, Atletico Madrid, as it seems, favorite here. On to a match that is, that is sort of an enigma. Juventus against Borussia Dortmund. If this was 10 or 15 years ago, we would stay, say Juve is clear favorites. The Italian league at the time was the strongest in the world. Now the Serie A has seen a dramatic fall. But you don't know you have which Dortmund to expect, if it's the one from the Bundesliga that is in relegation, or the one that won the group in, in, in the Champions League. You don't know which Dortmund to, to expect, yeah. so you don't know what matchup to expect. Yeah, Dr. Jürgen or Mr. Klopp. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking, you know, a very good team last few years. This year, obviously, in the Bundesliga, Dortmund are, it's the biggest surprise in European football. The, 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 fact, the, the fact that they play so poorly and especially the results are so poor. But in Europe, you know, they did pretty well. Marco Reus should be back by the Juventus matchup. Juve is the best team in Italy, but as you said before, it's true, Serie A is not nearly as strong as it used to be. I, I look at it as a 50-50 matchup. And uh, we'll take now a break from the draw to look at the top and flop of the group stage. And we start with the flop. You have, I know this is one hurting you, Liverpool. They, they almost won the championship in England seven months ago. They were not able to go past Basel this time. Brandon Rodgers, it's not going so well. It's a very, very sad story, especially for Liverpool fans as myself, because you just wouldn't believe that this thing could happen. Last year was a magical year. The, the team played so beautifully. They scored three goals per game. They were good throughout the season. But Liverpool did a very big mistake by letting Luis Suarez go. And you say, OK, the guy wanted to leave. The guy, you know, bit Kileni in the, in the World Cup. But still, getting 75 million pounds for, the, for him and replacing him by a lot of players who cost 140, 130 million pounds. But are not near and they're though. not worth half of one Luis Suarez. Really, it's a terrible, terrible t uh, transfers of, that we had, that Liverpool had. And eventually, you know, playing so poorly, Brandon Rodgers, a lot of bad decisions, you know, 
coming, you know, playing with a lot of defensive midfielders, not giving Balotelli the confidence he should give, uh, he should get, not playing with a, with enough strikers, not acquiring enough strikers, and Liverpool plays without confidence, without ability. And, you know, even it's not good enough to pass Basel. I think Basel was deserving of advancing to the round of 16 and not Liverpool, although Liverpool were cl close to win that game. So I think Liverpool justifiably is not in the round of 16. They should really concentrate on the Premier League, although they'll be playing in the Europa League as well. And, and Michael, we're, we know the fans were hearing one saying Brandon Rodgers is a problem. We're hearing it's not just the fans thinking that uh, at the moment. Yeah, so the Daily Mail has reported that there's some problems happening inside the locker room. Uh, the players seem to be not too happy um, and even the keeper uh, Simona Mignolet he was uh, dropped indefinitely so there's some uncertainty what's happening inside uh, Rogers you know says that they they have to recapture the feeling of the team and to get the emphasis of the team back together but it's normal in a, in a locker room there's always some problems when the teams are aren't, aren't winning so the big issue with them is to get their form together and the press will continue watching how they're reacting. And I think also Steve Gerrard, the great captain, also deserves criticism because a lot of people, even Jamie Carragher, came out this week saying that there is lack of leadership in Liverpool. They're not playing with enough passion. And the guy who's in charge of the leadership is yes. our leader, Steven Steven Gerrard, Gerrard. Not doing Gerrard. And he's not showing up. Absolutely. He's not playing well enough. And you also see the body language. You don't Something see him as missing. a leader. And Liverpool really need him this season. Yes. And so if Liverpool is the flop of the group stage, Monaco would have to be the top. Most analysts expected one French team this stage, Paris Saint-Germain, but then Monaco joined as group winners. Sasha Robo and Michael Friedman look at the story of the team from the Riviera. This was one of the biggest surprises of the group stage. Monaco had an impressive campaign and came out first in their group, which contained Bayer Leverkusen, Benfica, and Zenith St. Petersburg. The team celebrated their return to the knockout stage after almost a decade of absence and hoped to manage a comeback. If they achieve more wins, the team will owe it to one man, Leonardo Jardim, who could not hide his satisfaction about winning the group. I'm happy because we managed this. It seems to me that the group and the players gave a great response to the criticism that were made. We played well and deserved a qualification. Along with the success made by the coach, his key players should not be overlooked. Jeremy Tulala had provided great experience for the Red and Whites. The midfielder has always led the way for his teammates, and he wants to see his team succeed. Today I'm able to help the younger players more than I was a few years ago. To me it's not a problem. My goal is to go as far as we can. We fight to play in European competitions all year long, especially for the Champions League again. I want us to go as far as we can. Another important player during their qualification has been Dimitar Berbatov. The Bulgarian striker has thought to be near the end of his career, but continues to make noise with his great work ethic. Despite not scoring this year in the Champions League, Berbatov remains a player who can create more opportunities for his team and put the collective before his own personal interest. In the end, like I say, if we play our game, uh, even one goal can make a difference. It doesn't matter who scores as long as we, we win the game. For Monaco, the beautiful story is still being written. The players believe in themselves and know that their previous showing in the group stage, they can surprise any opponent. Europe is warned. Monaco is hungry for more victories and will do everything to satisfy their thirst. And you have next for Monaco is Arsenal, who may seem favorites. Arsene Wenger, Monaco's former coach. But Arsenal is very unstable. Monaco could win this. They could, although this year they're playing without Falcao and James Rodriguez. But we saw Dimitar Berbatov was playing well for them. They're surprising. They finished first. Playing against the better team in Arsenal. You know, we know Arsene Wenger, you know, really made his name back in Monaco in the 80s. But Arsenal are stronger. I think also playing relatively better lately. Clear favorites in this matchup, I think. But Monaco can surprise us again. And now let's move to matches where there are clear, clear favorites. Real Madrid, Schalke and Bayern Munich against Shakhtar. Real Madrid, Schalke, that was the case last season in the stage. 9-2 in aggregate. Any reason to think it will look different this time? No, no. Real Madrid now going on a 20-win streak, playing superb football, having really, you know, everyone is in top form. First and foremost, Ronaldo, Gareth Bale, Benzema. Uh, Tony Cross, uh, everyone, you know, and uh, 
Schalke, just not good enough. And Bayern, Bayern Munich, Shakhtar, and pretty much the same story. The same story, I think it could even end up in a larger gap, you know, because Bayern may be the strongest team in Europe alongside Real. Shakhtar, we know about the political situation in Indonesia. They're not even this playing team doesn't home. play at home. There's a big mess there. You know, they still, they have a very good coach in Mircea Lucesco. They made it to the round of 16. Which is nice, but that's but probably I as far be, as it would I go. I would be quite shocked if that would be close Absolutely. with Bayern. And there's also the Porto uh, Basel matchup, uh, all that beginning in mid-February. Yoav Borovic, Michael Friedman, thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it for this Talking Football. We'll be back again tomorrow to cover all the events from La Liga and the Premier League. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.